Granted, this probably would be a better place to stop, but I am a masochist, apparently. <laughs> 2nd November, 11.38 a.m. Supreme Court, Court of Judicature, Defendant Antechamber 5. Excellent work, Rita. Okay, that was superb. Uh, my heart was in my mouth the entire time. It was almost unbelievable. I mean, look at you in there. You were drenched in sweat, your eyes popping out of, out of your knees knocking, and you were grinding your teeth. It was a grim sight, but before I knew it, you were starting to find inconsistencies in the testimonies. I think you might have a natural talent for being a lawyer. Forget it, it's terrifying! If I get through this, I don't ever want to see the inside of a courtroom again. I feel that. <laughs> Defendant Narahoto, court recess is over. Please make your way back inside the courtroom at once. It's time. Let's get back to it, partner. Hey, 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 hey! Let's go in there and deal a decisive blow from these old fossils before these old fossils know what hit them. Like a meteor. Uh, Kazuma. What? Thank you. Really? What for? Well, if you hadn't said you believed me, then... I'm fairly sure or I've already been found guilty by now. Look, I have faith in you. As a lawyer, and as a friend. Coming from you, that means a lot. If I'm found guilty in this trial... He's really going to give up on his dream of studying abroad. That's the kind of true friend he is. So this isn't just my battle anymore. Whoever we're up against, we absolutely can't afford to lose. This is unfortunate motivation. I'll say the thank yous for after the trial. You can treat me as one of the sukiyaki meals I like from the May Cafeteria at University Street. With an extra large portion, of course. Second November, 12.09 p.m. Supreme Court, Court of Judicature, Courtroom 2. <sighs> Bye. The court hereby resumes trial of Ryunosuke Naruhoto. Prosecutor Aochi, have you managed to subpoena the witness? Yes, sir, I can see against all odds. And thanks to a certain young stripling, the prosecution is now under rather painful scrutiny from the government. Uh, sorry? Let the government scrutinize. That's their job. It's nothing to worry about. It's highly likely that the good relations we forged with Great Britain will emerge from this trial unscathed. Will you still think it's nothing to worry about when the new treaty breaks down and our nation found- Nation founders? I feel like it means it's meant to be flounders? Again, terribly sorry. If the friendships between our nations is really so fragile, then this treaty isn't worth the paper it's written on. Kazuma, just cut it with a knife. <gasps> you really have nothing to worry about, Ryanosuke. What do you mean? A secret trial, anxiety over some foreign government's opinions, a budgeting investigation, missing witnesses. Is that what our nation's justice system is? Is it Supreme Court of Japan or of England? Shut up! Shut up! You jumped up, rookie boy! <laughs> you and your friend know nothing, nothing of the situation our nation finds itself in. By aligning ourselves with this greater world power, we'll be strong. Diplomacy has never been more critical. You just wipe sweat all over your glasses. 
Steady political maneuvering is what will secure our futures. I won't deny that I'm no expert, I'm just a student and one who could arguably study harder too. But standing here now in our Supreme Court, there is one thing that I feel very strongly. A country that fails to uphold the truth in its justice system is a country with no future at all. Oof. Laying it down. Well said, Ryanosuke. Despite the wide-eyed look of terror. You little brats! <laughs> Thank you, Council. This court is the pinnacle of our nation's justice system. It exists solely for the pursuance of truth. With that in mind, the trial will now resume with the next witness taking the stand. The visiting student from Great Britain, Miss Giselle Brett. Yes. Your Excellency. She has a very fancy hat. Well, what a delight it is to welcome such a fine, gentle woman into Japan and from such a distant land. Are you gonna smooth her or question her? Tea, someone bringing us tea. In England, no discussions take place without tea. Is that true? No idea. So, er, uh, ahem. Uh, could we possibly trouble you to state your name and occupation for the court? Of course. Hosanaga, they are not talking to you. Literally not talking to you. Yes, yes, we know about you already. <laughs> Inspector Hosanaga, where are your manners? In England, it's always ladies first. Is that true? No idea. And I also see more of, like, oh, not excellent. <sighs> I'm guessing that's the key that she's speaking English in this translated game. <laughs> um, I'm terribly sorry, dear lady, but what? Lady says her name is Giselle Brett. She comes from London, England. She is visiting a research student currently enrolled in Yuma University's medical faculty. Oh my, what a rare treat to hear the dulcet tones of the delightful language of the British people. I'm afraid I don't understand a word you said, but it was beautiful as a hummingbird song. As far as I can tell, the detective is translating your words faithfully enough. Yes, I agree. <sighs> she says, yes. It's a lot of text for yes. <laughs> this could take some time. Even though she's studying here in Japan, she's studying here in Japan, she can't speak any Japanese. She'd like to apologize for disappearing from the scene. She says she was due to, to make a presentation at the university, so she had to leave immediately. Interesting. When you're the one who engineered her escape. I was just following special orders from the bureau. Well now, dear lady, would you be so kind to cast your eyes over the photographic pic? Seeing as you were so unfortunately present at the scene of the crime, could it be that your resplendent eyes caught sight of the wicked perpetrator, perhaps? Apparently, it was very frightening and sorrowful sight. Do you mean to say, yes, it would appear the lady did witness the crime. 
The very moment when the accused standing right here, right there in this courtroom, shot the victim in cold blood. So she did it. Okay. Order. Order in the court. Did you hear that, Your Excellency? Here we have an absolute conclusive witness statement. Hmm. Yeah, you thought you had two of those before now, and those went shut. Well, looks like it's clear now. Clear who our real enemy is. Unfortunately, I will have to ask you to formally testify, if you please. Kindly tell the court the exact nature of this frightening and sorrowful sight you described. I had arranged to meet for a slightly late luncheon with Dr. Wilson that day. The professor was unable to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beef steak. After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor when they got into a fierce argument. Then not long afterwards, the accused look took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. I don't carry a gun myself, so I obviously wouldn't have been the culprit. Prove it! <laughs> yes! This is a condemning... No, I didn't have any kind of argument with the professor at all. Quiet, you filthy wretch. Look at you. You black-hearted black guard. Look at this snow-white angel. I'm sure even a dark mind scoundrel like you can imagine whose words the court is going to believe. Ugh. You're still making the same mistakes, Ryanosuke. You mustn't blurt out when you're goaded like that. That's the lesson you need to learn. But he's so annoying! Of course, I was at the scene as well. I took the statements from this lady and the two witnesses to testify before and report it back to the bureau. It was decided that Miss Pratt was not involved, so I let her go. The testimonies of the last two witnesses were completely worthless. However, well, even so, on the day in question, the lady was wearing the same outfit she is today. As you can see, there is nowhere about her person where she conceal a could conceal a firearm. There's a lot of places she could be concealing a firearm in all of that. <laughs> Don't tell me she can't. Her hat, her, what the hell is the freaking skirt thing called? It's not a bodice. There's, cause that's chest. Oh, good lord. I don't even fucking remember. She's got layers upon layers of shit. She could absolutely conceal a firearm. I would think she could hide a gun almost anywhere in that outfit if she wanted to. Thank you, Ryanosuke. <laughs> And listen until the precise location where the witness is to have hidden the weapon can be shown is moot. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. Those are the witness's own words on the matter. That's ridiculous. If only I was allowed to lift up her dress, I could prove it. Don't think about doing anything rash, Ryanosuke. But I didn't fire the gun. I picked it up. There must have been another gun there that day. You're right about that. Which means, this lady was hiding a gun somewhere. That's where... That's what we have to prove now. And to do so, we'll need to pull her testimony apart. Have no fear, my dear lady. I swear I will crush the evil fiend that has subjected you to a ter terrible plight. So this victim, Dr. Wilson, had nothing to eat or drink at all. That's right. Other than some carbonated water. Just water. Yes, the professor was unable to eat, but he had been given permission to drink water. So it appears that the diners took visit their lunch with a glass of water each. Hmm. They each raised a glass of carbonated water. 
What do you think, Rinosuke? Yeah? About the witness's last statement. That last statement in Gordon's is bread. Has a profound bearing in this case. Well, well, how fascinating. Do you tell us what that is, is profound bearing? The significance of the statement will be apparent when the time is right. The defense calls for this last statement to be formally added to the testimony. We'll sidestep counsel. Very well, Miss Brett. Can I repeat what you just said to be added to your official testimony? Gladly, she said. That was brilliant, Polly. Sma, I'm going to remember that one day. Which one? The significance will become apparent when the time is right. I could really use that phrase. I'd hope there'd be some more useful tips you're picking up from this experience than that, Ryanosuke. I don't carry a gun myself, so obviously I couldn't have been the culprit. Yes! Press on that! It's all very well saying that, but can you prove it? Absolutely. I verified it personally. You verified it. Yes, immediately after the incident, I checked to make sure the lady was not carrying a weapon. I distinctly remember her saying, I'm not. That's all you did? You just axed her? Surely you carried out a physical search, Inspector. No. Why on earth not? The Honorable Englishwoman clearly stated that she did not possess a weapon. There is obviously no need for any further probing into that matter. Or, there was no permission given for any further probing into the matter, perhaps. Think that what you will. But if you're going to continue this presumptuous claim, then refrain that a refined lady was concealing a firearm. The prosecution demands that you support your assertion with facts. In other words, he wants evidence. <laughs> I ordered a beef steak for myself when Professor had cheers over a glass. There's only one glass here. Yes. Is this it? That's it. Let me just confirm something, please. It's to do with this photographic print. Just a short while ago, you spoke of this print showing the victim's table at the crime scene. That is exactly as it was left. That is correct, the lady says. Well, that is, it's, um, it's odd, very odd. Dear me, what, uh, what's odd is the defense's inability to express itself. Uh, Rinosuke, what is this that the print looks odd to you? Well, obviously, it's... It's the cheers! The cheers? Miss Bright, you just told us that she and the professor said cheers over a glass of water. But if that's true, there should be two glasses at the table, not one. Ah! Yeah. Inspector, what did the lady say? It would seem that it was Miss Brett who took the glass from the table. What? It was also terrifying everything that happened. I panicked and thought I should try to hide the fact that there it are. I'd been there at all, she's saying. Good gracious. It would seem that she slipped it into a small handbag she was carrying. A handbag, you say? Yes, Sir Excellency. A small hand pouch which commonly carried by well-to-do women in England. You mean, like, a place she could have concealed a gun! So the beautiful ladies very graciously explained how and why she removed the glass from the scene now. However, the fact remains the glass has 
absolutely no bearing on the case. Hmm. That's right. So she took the glass away in her handbag. If there's a deeper significance there, it's... The handbag. Wait. The lady put a glass in her handbag, you say? Yes. Do try to keep up. It's already been explained to the court that all English women, gentlewomen, carry handbags for small items. Like a gun! Let me see. A little while ago, Miss Brett stated the following. There's no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. But, what she forgot to mention was her handbag. In which it would be perfectly possible to conceal a gun. Did you or did you not search Miss Giselle Brett's handbag the day of the murder? No, sir. I did not. As I thought. In other words, another gun, the one that was actually used to kill the professor, could have been hidden in Miss Brett's handbag. No. Reasonable doubt, at the very least, is reasonable doubt. No one saw it. He's claiming no. She may be claiming yes, but if she's the perpetrator, she could be lying. Reasonable doubt. The print of the photograph that I thought would be prudent to and take immediately after the shooting. As you can see, it clearly shows Miss Brett's handbag. Well, I never. You can see right through to what's inside. As you can see, there's nothing to imply Miss Brett's guilt here. There's still a lot of places she could have had her gun on that fucking outfit of hers. Thank you for helping to prove that, Naruhoto san. Ugh. What is that mark on its wrist? Why is there a mark on his wrist? I think you've had long enough to cross into him in the witness council. The court has now been shown considerable evidence. As the photograph of print has submitted into the court appears to have no further significance, I am satisfied that there is no longer any room for doubt in this matter. I must make my ruling. Indeed, and there is only one logical conclusion. That the pathetic lurkey slumped over the bench inch before us is the only possible perpetrator in this crime. No. Just when I thought I was beginning to turn things around. I'm in a worse situation than I was at the start. Um, Kazuma? I'm sorry, Ryanosuke. Now that the cross-examination of the witness is over, there's no way to force the trial to continue. What? You mean, this is it? I'll now proceed immediately to the ruling. Okay. Seems we'll be able to report to the British government on time after all. That smug bill. Ryanosuke Naruhoto, having considered all of the evidence placed before me, yes! I hereby find you. Wait, Your Excellency. Ryunosuke? I don't think you can rule in this case yet. This amateurishness is getting tedious. When his Excellency deems that the trial is over, he gives his ruling. That's the most basic protocol of the courtroom. Your Excellency, this just a moment ago you said this. As this photograph of print just submitted appears to have no further significance, there's no longer any room for a doubt in this matter. I, mu I must make my ruling. Now that means that there's one problem with the evidence, some significant detail. I mean, the ruling on this case at this time would be out of the question. This is blatant, strong clutching. Look at this photographic print. All it shows is the handbag of the gentlewoman is carrying the day in the question. There can be no problem with this evidence. Yes, I am desperate, but this isn't always. There's something about this photograph that just doesn't seem right. If only I could put my finger on it. Very well, I will grant the defense one final opportunity. 
What? Just be warned that if I am satisfied by your response here, the trial will be over with immediate effect. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Your Excellency. So, just another look at the photographic print Inspector Sonaga submitted before. You will identify for the court where this print will see significant detail as to which you allude. Yes! Look at this, here. There's a very unusual mark on the victim's wrist. That is true. It looks almost like a burn of some description. Attention! Dear me, I was pondering what new piffle would come out of you. A burn, you say, on the victim's wrist. Clearly there's nothing whatsoever to do with the magnificent lady's handbag. Yes, that is a burn mark, you're right. Go on, Inspector. The police coroner had noticed it when he was performing the postmortem examination. It was deemed unrelated to the cause of death, so he didn't note it in his report. What did I tell you? In any case, we have no idea whether the victim suffered this burn, do we? And no possible way of knowing either. The more I look at it, the more I find myself intrigued by this curious shape of the mark. However, as prosecution and UC points out, unless a firm connection to this case can be shown, I cannot allow any further time to be spent on this precise details of this burn. If I had to find something to link that burn to the case... This is the moment of truth. I'm trying to find some evidence that proves what re burn really means. So then the defense will now present evidence to this court. The evidence that demonstrates any inscrutable connection between the victim's burn and this trial. Ah! Yes! This? What's this, Council? Yet another print? Yes, Your Excellency. I believe the photographic prints are an amazing invention. When we humans look at science, we miss things. But in a photograph, things we may have overlooked at the time are recorded forevermore. Do hurry up, Rookie. What are you trying to say? To inconvenience this poor lady any further would be inexcusable. Actually, we may need you to stay a little while longer if you don't mind, Miss Brett. You see, it's very clearly visible in this other photograph. However, the victim come to have had that unusual shape burn on his wrist. The reason is recorded here forevermore. What? How? You can't fool me with little bluffs, boy. If that's your game, then we'll see how it plays out. Show you the court exactly what you mean. What is in this photograph that explains the reason for the victim's burn? Da -da -da. Yes. The the beef steak? Actually, the point is the metal plate the steak was served on. The plate. Ah, ah! Your Excellency, are you all right? As you can see, there's an emblem on the plate. I would guess it's some sort of trademark of the La Carnival. Ah. This emblem on the plate. And the victim's burn. Are the exact the same shape. Ah. You're Nusuke. You genius. You're spot on. Which means... The victim must have suffered this burn while he was present at the restaurant. There was no mild burn there, that's for sure. Can't be more specific about it. Well, let's see. If the plate was around 90 degrees centigrade, a burn like that would have taken around 3 seconds. 
It's inconceivable that a victim wouldn't let out a scream of pain then. I've been investigating the, the restaurant for several weeks already. I've not heard anyone scream at all. As a head waiter of La Carnival, I can testify that without hesitation. So the question is, why didn't a single person hear Wilson scream? Because there was a gunshot. I almost don't believe it. Runeske, you, do you think? Can I really be? Can it really be true? I never dreamt we'd arrive at a conclusion like this, but I'm starting to think that maybe we've been led into a terrible trap. There's only one explanation I can think of to make sense of this apparent impossibility. On the day in question, when he suffered the burn of his wrist, Dr. Wilson... No man would remain silent while his wrist was being burned on a piking hot plate for three whole seconds. That's clearly impossible. Apart from one particular situation. Counsel? Are you suggesting? Yes, it's only possible if the man was already dead. Already? Dead? Knowing what we know now, it's the only possibility a possible explanation. When the beefsteak was brought to Dr. Wilson's table that day, the professor was already dead. That's... That's madness! Poison! It's poison! I certainly didn't anticipate this twist of events. What was that smile? Yes, of course. I mean, I'll be delighted to... I'd be delighted... Especially if it helps relations between my country and yours. Uh, Miss, Miss Brett, you speak Japanese. Well, of course I do. I'm studying in your country after all. But then why have you been speaking through Inspector until now? My mother tongue, the Queen's English, is the most refined and elegant, lang elegant language in the world. As a gentlewoman, I try to avoid speaking in your vulgar tones as much as possible. This seems kind of racist. <laughs> Victim's death. Unfortunately, I have no idea when the poor man burned his wrist like that. When the waiter brought my steak, the professor... And I raised our glasses in a toast. But as far as I've heard, the postmortem report showed no other possible cause of death besides the gunshot. If there is some other way a man's life can be taken without leaving a trace, please do show me. But of course, this country's inferior investigation techniques probably wouldn't pick up on it anyway. I mean, I have an idea of what's the cause. I just need to figure out where I can present the evidence. And which point of evidence I can submit to that. Yes, Sir Excellency. They may proceed with the cross-examination. Hmm, a way of killing someone that leaves no trace. We need some evidence to back us up here. S. Evidence. Uh. But of course, this country's interior investigations techniques probably would. <sighs> yes! Press that! Inferior? What do you mean by that? In the lands of the Great British Empire, the police store everything found on the crime scene for later examination. But in this country, you investigate once, and that's the end of it. Isn't that so? Quite right. La Carval is open for business as usual today, just days after the incident. Exactly, which means that even if the investigation what? takes a different direction, vital evidence may be lost. Why is there a thought bubble? Doesn't even occur to your naive detectives to try and preserve the crime scene. 
I'm trying to be as tactful as I can about this, you understand. Ah, a killer bow. The lady is formidable as she is beautiful. Amazing. He's actually admitting our police may be flawed. Perhaps prosecutor, but she is finally starting to see some sense. I very much doubt that. Still, there's something about what Miss Brick just said. There was a moment before when something didn't quite seem right. What do you think, Ryunosuke? I think it's going terribly. No matter how much I press her, I'm not turning up any new information. Yes, as I suspected, she's a tough witness. We need to find some way to break her testimony, or the cross-examination will be over. But that would mean I have to find a way. There must be some clue somewhere to help us clink chink in her armor. Kazuma. What, Rinosuke? There is one thing I noticed. Something that's been bothering me. Bothering you? You mean... About Miss Brett? Actually, no. About the person standing next to her. Inspector Hosanaga. The detective. Yes. He seems to react a little strangely to Miss Brett's last statement. I wonder if it might be significant. If it might present an opening, maybe. Alright, I have an idea. Try pressing her on the last statement one more time. If you think so, but... But this time, instead of targeting the woman herself... Let's see what we can get out of the detective. Alright then, I wonder what Cosmo's thinking. Find out soon enough, I suppose. When I press Miss Brett on her last statement again. Is that even after investigation may take... In different direction, vital evidence may be lost. Yes, there it is again. The detective's reaction is just the same as before. Why? Up until now, the detective has been on stand with Miss Brett as her interpreter. But things are very different now. For this testimony, the detective is just listening to what the English woman has to say. This court would be a golden opportunity. What do you mean? When people are actually testifying, they're usually very careful not to let anything slip. However, when they're listening to someone else speak, you'll find they often let their guard down. You're right, look at him. He's lost in his own thoughts. It's time to pursue the man and his train of thought. Sorry? Pursue? I'll explain how to do it now. Ryunosuke, it's all to do with the witness marker. What marker? At the moment, we're focused on Miss... Brett, who is the person it's actually his current statement. But by moving the marker left and right, you can turn the attention to the other people in the stand. While you're looking at the other witnesses, you'll be able to pursue them with A. If you can catch the person just at the right time, you might uncover some new information to pursue. If you ever notice a strange atmosphere among the people in the stand, take a good look around. Alright then, so I first you should move the crosser marker across with directional and focus on the detective. Then pursue him with A and see what's on his mind. Here we go. Wait. Hitting the button. Hit. What's the meaning of this? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to shock you. He's really lost his thoughts deeply. It looked like you were thinking something just now, Inspector. Perhaps having heard what the lady next to you had to say? If there's something you'd like to say, please share it with the court. What is the meaning of this? It's the delightful Englishwoman who's testifying at the moment. If you can't find fault with her testimony, then the cross-examination should be over immediately. Is that how it works? Absolutely not. The defective is not in the stand, which makes him a valid witness. Yes, not to mention the fact that he's intimately involved with this case. Inspector Hosanaga? Yes. 
Do you have something to add in relation to the statement just made by Miss Brooke? Well, yes, if you don't mind, I would like to speak. The lady is right, our country's police practices are not as modern as those used in Great Britain. Which is why I, Satoru Hosanaga, always try to make every investigation I'm involved in flawless. You literally covered up shit. Fuck you. <laughs> What do you mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. I won't have any evidence lacking on my watch. I'm not afraid to take everything I can from the scene of a crime. It's preserving evidence, you see. Yet you let her take a glass. You didn't search her. You <sighs> I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief. I'm not ashamed of what I've done. <coughs> Is that... This is the bottle of carbonated water that I took to the victim's table the day in question. Ah, uh, yes. It's lost all of its fizz, having been opened three days ago now. But it was carbonated water. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, there's been some left in the bottle. I can see it. One day our police force will be among the best in the world. But the time is coming, I guarantee. <coughs> you are so dying. Of poison, probably. I can't say I can do in the witness's actions, but I do understand the sentiment. The court will accept the glass bottle as bottle of water as evidence. I wonder, could there be anything in this water? What's the matter? You've gone quiet all of a sudden. I think I might have just worked something out. An interesting possibility. What is this? The bottle of water. Actually, there's one method of killing a man without leaving a trace that comes to mind. Poison! Obviously, I'm referring to... Poison. Poison. On the day of his death, we know that Dr. Wilson drank from this bottle of carbonated water. Could it be that there was poison inside? I'm afraid I may have spoken unfairly before. I offer my most humble apologies. I'm sorry, my lady, to what are you referring? I described your police force as inferior. But no matter how inferior they may be, you still investigated this particular point thoroughly, I believe. The bottle, I mean, Inspector, and whether it contained poison or not. Of course. You did? Have you forgotten what my guiding principle is so, so already? I strive for flawless investigation every time. I don't believe it. Naturally, we tested the inside of the bottle and its contents. And what did you find, Inspector? I ordered the test for every toxin available that the country, in this country at present time. We could find no trace of poison on any description in the bottle of carbonated water. Thought, thought, help me here. I'm sorry, Rinosuke. I have nothing more. Come on. If you excuse me now, I really must be leaving. Hold it. Oh! Help! Please wait. Isn't that. What is the meaning of this? Forgive me for intruding on court proceeding, Your Excellency. Suzato Mikotoba, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Mikotoba? In my darkest hour, with nowhere left to go, she appeared like a bolt of lightning. And in her hand, she carried a small package wrapped in the furoshiki cloth. In a furoshiki cloth. 